untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a Red White Shadowfax Lord of Horses deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. So we're playing with this 5 mana 4 4 legendary horse that will show us the meaning of haste as all horses we control have haste, including Shadowfax himself. And then whenever Shadowfax attacks, we may put a creature card with lesser power from our hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. So for the most part, we're looking to cheat some expensive creatures into play that have power 3 or less. So that's really what we're trying to accomplish. And to make that happen on turn 4, we're also playing quite a few ramp cards so we can play Shadowfax a turn early. Also makes it less likely for the opponent to already have some great blockers lined up so that our 4-4 can survive and we can keep the attacks going. And then I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with our removal. We've got some efficient removal spells, including a source of plowshares and a lightning bolt at one mana. Then a fateful absence can clear some larger creatures or planeswalkers. Also vacation can exile an opposing creature or planeswalker. Needs to enchant a basic land, which is not that difficult to accomplish. We've got a braid can hit creatures as well as artifacts. A lightning strike can deal three damage to any target. Just a strike also good at dealing with larger creatures. Lightning Helix deals 3 while gaining 3, Rip Apart also deals 3 to a creature at sorcery speed or can destroy an artifact or enchantment, and Loran can also deal with artifacts or enchantments, and we can also potentially tap Loran to draw an extra card, even if the opponent also gets to draw, since we're often just looking for more expensive creatures to cheat onto the battlefield. And then our next section is Mana Acceleration, where we have Ragavan, can of course do a lot more than just provide extra treasure tokens. We've got a Riveteer's Requisitioner, can play it early as a 3-1, or we can blitz it to be guaranteed an extra treasure token to set up a turn for Shadowfax. Then Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone, kind of the classic 2-mana ramp artifact. And then I'm also playing Mirror Converts and Ornithopter of Paradise. These are creatures, so more susceptible to removal, but since we're in red-white we don't get as many ramp options as in green. And then at 3-mana there's Captain Lannery, can also make extra treasures when it attacks. Seize the Spoils lets us discard and draw two while making a treasure token to set up a turn for Shadowfax. And then there's a Cultivator's Caravan making one mana of any color, but also 5-5 five five Vehicle with Crew 3 once it's done making mana. We've got a Heraldic Banner typically naming white to pump up our creatures. We've got Mana Geode which lets us scry one when it enters. File of Galadriel can also be a nice way to refuel once we're empty-handed. And the Celestus gives us a bit more card selection, especially once we're empty-handed in the late game and looking for additional action spells. And then we've got a few more ways to help us clear a path. We've got Authority of the Consoles, making opposing creatures enter battlefield tapped, so it makes it easier to keep attacking as the opponent's not going to be able to line up blockers as easily. We've got Curse of Silence, naming the opponent's commander typically to make that more expensive and buy us more time. Asper Sentinel can also tax the opponent's non-creature spells, maybe make them play a turn behind schedule. Selfless Savior and Selfless Spirit can both be sacrificed to help make Shadowfax indestructible to protect it. And then Invasion of Gobakan, as well as Elite Spellbinder, can maybe exile an opposing card from the opponent's hand and make it too more expensive. And it's also pretty easy to transform the invasion with our hasty Shadowfax and the creature we put on the battlefield. And then once transformed, it can also protect our team. And then the next category are removal creatures that can maybe enter the battlefield with Shadowfax and clear the opponent's largest blocker and then often go unopposed. So we've got Brutal Cathar, Fairgrounds Warden and Fiend Hunter that can exile an opposing creature for as long as they stay on the battlefield. And then a Skyclave Apparition can exile something for good with mana value 4 or less, can also hit non-creature targets. Then Eowyn, another new addition, can also clear a larger creature. We've got Angel of Sanctions, can exile any opposing non-land permanent when it enters a battlefield, can also be embalmed for 6 mana. We've got the Zealous Conscript, which can steal an opposing permanent for a turn, especially useful against opposing Planeswalkers, which we can steal and then maybe even Minus or Ultimate in the same turn. We've got the Alabaster Host Intercessor, can be Planes cycled early to hit our land drops, but also nice to cheat into play as a 3-4 that is similar to the Fairgrounds Warden and Fiend Hunter. And then Meter Golem, when it enters, can destroy any target a non-land permanent an opponent controls. And then we continue with more creatures that we would love to cheat into play, including the Imperial Aerosaur, can potentially give our Shadowfax plus one plus one and flying, so the opponent won't be able to block it all that easily. A Restoration Angel can flicker one of our creatures to maybe re-enable and enter the battlefield ability, but at the very least we can also flicker Shadowfax if it's about to run into a larger blocker, so that way we can also save it while still putting a Restoration Angel on the battlefield. There's Elish Norn, which can also tax the 
opponent or make them lose more life and can also be pretty easy to transform especially alongside some of our token makers there's a luminous brute moth which can also potentially turn shadow fangs into a flying horse alongside our other creatures and then a Sarah Paragon, also quite nice, especially with some of our removal creatures that we'll be able to return from the graveyard. Thraben Watcher can also pump up our team. The Blade Historian gives our team double strike, so it can be incredibly deadly. Angel of Invention also pumps the team while making servo tokens. God Eternal Okatra can be a 3-6 double strike, so it hits pretty hard, and then can start making 4-4 zombie tokens. Enduring Angel, a 3-3 double strike with flying, giving us hexproof, and can also save us from a lethal attack. And then Aurelia doesn't trigger the turn we put it in play with Shadow Facts, but then on the following turn we get an extra attack step, so it can also be a lot of fun. Do keep in mind that you probably need to reorder the trigger from Aurelia and the one from Shadow Facts, so you first put the creature in play with Shadow Facts's ability, and then afterwards untap it with Aurelia, so it can attack a second time. And then we've got Comet Thresher, which will enter as a 3-3 double strike that draws a card. And then a Goring Ceratops, also a 3-3 double strike. And the turn after we put it in play with Shadow Facts, it can also give our other creatures double strike until end of turn. And Soul of Migration we can evoke for 4 mana, but better to just put it in play with Shadow Facts. And then we get a 2-4 Flyer and 2-1-1 Bird tokens with flying as well. And then the final category is the Miscellaneous, where we have a few more ways to take an extra attack step, with Resurgence at 5 mana, giving our team first strike and Vigilance, and then a Response can also be cast to deal 5 damage to an attacking or blocking creature instead. We've got Combat Celebrant, if we exert it, to give us an extra attack step, and then we've got Angel Fire Ignition, which can also be a way to force a creature through, giving it a bunch of plus 1 counters, Vigilance, Trample, Lifelink, Indestructible, and Haste until end of turn, can also be flashed back, and a Merry, just a nice 2-drop that can potentially draw extra cards alongside Shadow Facts. And then our mana base includes a few utility lands like Iganjo, which can be channeled. We've got Den of the Bugbear, which can also turn into a nice creature land. Castle Embereth to pump the team. Minas Tirith to draw extra cards. And then a Crucible can also be channeled to make extra 1-1s. One and then just a few more red-white dual lands for mana fixing. So that's our deck. Now let's gallop into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play facing an Emoti a ramp deck. And our hand isn't all that amazing. We're missing some acceleration, and then uh, opponent's going to develop their mana pretty quickly, so Sentinel and Curse are going to lose effectiveness pretty quickly. Savior's not really necessary, so I'll take a mulligan. This hand is also missing a bit of ramp, and if we don't play turn for Shadow Fangs, it may be too slow. Paragon, also not the best in this matchup, since things don't tend to die. I do like Blade Historian and Justice Strike, but... I think this may still be a mulligan. Okay, this is better, although we do need to top deck an expensive creature to put in play. A Lightning Bolt should be effective, kills Emoti or maybe an early mana elf. And then have to decide between a response resurgence and a land. Probably get rid of a land, we already have 4 mana with the Ornithopter. And we're likely to find another mana source. Whereas at least with Response Resurgence, we have something exciting to cast the turn after we play Shadow Facts. Okay, Loran could maybe blow up a ramp artifact. Opponent passes, Vantage is still untapped at least. So not much going on unless we just want to play a 2-1 Loran. I guess it helps us draw, so it may be worth it still can help us find something expensive to put in play. Cultivate happens. Okay, so no target for Lightning Bolt early on. Time for Shadow Facts, and then what we can do is, with a trigger on the stack after attacking with our Vigilant Loran, activate it and hope to draw something expensive. Take our draw. Castles untapped. Alright, so we'll stick to the plan here. Go full control for this to work. Attack, Shadow Fangs trigger on the stack, activate Loran, but we still get to hit for two. And yeah, found a Intercessor which we can put in play. Nothing to exile, but at least a three-powered creature. And then next turn, Resurgence could be effective. 5 mana, 4 emoti, that we can lightning bolt, and a sage, just an 0-1. Okay, so we can take care of both creatures, 
Or we can cast Resurgence, which is maybe just better at this point. And then I can still Lightning Bolt. And I should probably bolt Emoti over Sage, since it actually trades for a creature. And then again go full control, attack, and hope that Loran can draw into another creature. Okay, Okatra's a good one. Actually should have tapped Loran in the extra attack step as opposed to the original one, so we get an extra attack in for two, since whatever we put in play is going to be tapped and doesn't get to take an extra attack step here. And our opponent's just going to take it here. Extra attack step. No more creatures to put in play, but our opponent's dead. Awesome. So glad we played a, a Loran on turn three, since it ended up drawing into quite a few creatures. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Smeagol, helpful guide. A 4-2 lines up pretty well against Shadowfax, but we've got a few removal spells at the ready. May end up uh, planes cycling the Intercessor to hit our land drop, but it seems keepable. And then we can even cast a Lightning Bolt off the treasure from Captain Lannery after attacking with it, to potentially clear a path. Turn one, Young Wolf, okay. So yeah, I think we're planes cycling to try and play Captain Lannery. Take one. And hope to dodge a removal spell since we could really use the treasure. Now we could also check out their hand with the Spellbinder first. I think I still gotta give Lannery a try. Alright, that worked out. So with the lands, we're looking at Shadowfax. Could play a Shadowfax second main, but that doesn't seem worth it. Gotta be able to attack with it. No land, unfortunately. So now probably go for Cold Steel Heart plus Lightning Bolts on Smeagol. And then Lannery can keep attacking and then keep up a braid. No need to sack any treasure tokens. And then first order of business next turn, play Shadowfax. And then uh, maybe put an Angel of Invention in play. Opponent's got an envelope, which we can also destroy with a braid. Although may not be necessary. Priest of Forgotten Gods could be worth taking out, although the uh, Soul of Migration making 1-1s one -ones can play around it, and so can an Angel of Invention by making the 1-1 one -ones servos. Okay, so Shadowfax can sack at least one treasure, growing Captain Lannery, and then we'll see if we want to braid could also have a look at the opponent's hand here with Elite Spellbinder, but it's better value to cheat something expensive and play like a Soul of Migration. And then next turn maybe pump the team with Angel of Invention, which we can hard cast at 5 mana. Opponent's gonna take it. Do we abrade Priest? Seems like a reasonable plan. Pump Solanary as well. And that denies a bunch of mana from potentially sacrificing two creatures, one of which, Young Wolf, is uh, pretty nice to sacrifice. So we hit them for a good amount, down to 10. And Sweeper could still get us. And a Meat Hook Massacre for 4 is certainly one of them. Yeah, if we had drawn an extra land and play Spellbinder, that could have been potentially prevented. Now we get back on the board with Spellbinder, and we can try and get there with our flyers. Fateful Absence. Yeah, let's just play Spellbinder. 
Death Sprout's pretty good here. Witch King also lines up quite well. And a Sauron. So a lot of great cards. Let's go for the Witch King. Which is already pretty expensive. Opponent takes out Spellbinder, gets to ramp. Yeah, I don't see us necessarily coming back. I've got a long way to go to replay Shadowfax on for mana here. Now Lenor Elves take two. Cathar is a pretty great answer to the Witch King at least. So we can save that one. No need to Fateful Absence anything. Can maybe take out the Dark Lord here. Opponent plays Witch King. And exiling it is the best solution. Take two. Now I may still want to play an Angel of Invention first to develop my board. And then exile the Witch King next turn. Okay, Ewin is actually the perfect flavorful answer to the Witch King. I mean, playing an Angel of Invention is still a bit more mana efficient here. So we'll start there, but I'm definitely open to the idea of playing Ewin next turn. And then I can make 1-1s one or I can make a large flyer. We don't know for a fact that our opponent has more removal in hand and the 1-1s one aren't going to have an easy time attacking necessarily. I guess next turn I could maybe Absence the 4-4 uh, four, four, and then Cathar the Witch King and then the tokens can attack past Young Wolf and Lenor Elves. Yeah, sure. Let's make two tokens. It does give more overall power and toughness, just not on our flyer. There's Smeagol. And a Nazgul. So, the ring up to a level 2 here. And the Witch King is going to be the ring bearer. Opponent found a mountain. Nazgul grows. And Witch King and Young Wolf both attack. Alright, so probably just take it all. So I guess Eowyn's going to end up exiling the Witch King anyways here, since it cannot get rid of the smaller creatures now. But it still seems pretty good. Can destroy the Nazgul, and then exile Witch King, attack with all. Opponent's going to be forced to trade away Smeagol for potentially a Servo token. And then uh, we'll get our opponent pretty low. Opponent plays Sauron. We've got Brutal Cathar at the ready. And a Flying Angel here to cross a finish line. I guess our opponent has a food token to gain three. So we do need to get three more damage in at least. So if I play Paragon, there's nothing to get back right away. Since we're a mana short. So if I go for Brutal Cathar, Exile Sauron, attack with all. That should be alright. opponents sacking a food token to stay alive but they'll fall to two and lose most of their board can they survive opponent replays Smeagol seven mana is a hefty price and our opponent explodes. Awesome. A very flavorful battle with Ewan exiling the Witch King. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Tom Bombadil, 5-color 
Saga deck. Our hand is not terrible. Authority probably not at its best here, but it can, I guess, prevent your opponent from blocking all that easily. And then we're hoping to string together more expensive creatures. But at least we've got a ramp to bank it up. Okay. Oh, Catra's definitely a good one. If I can put that in play first and then cast the creature, we'll be able to make a 4-4. Four -four. Play Mana Geode. And don't need planes. Three mana for the opponent, and Invasion that can exile a Catra here, that's pretty effective, since now it's seven mana to cast, and I can't put it in play with Shadow Facts anymore. Okay, it's too bad, so we'll have to settle for a Comma Thresher. Still pretty good. It's gonna hit him for ten total and draw a card, and Enduring Angel is next. And our opponent explodes, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Samwise, a food token deck. And our hands, alright. Could use another expensive creature to put in play, but we've got the early ramp covered at least. Okay, the Celebrant to take an extra attack step could be pretty fun. Turn to Gala Greeters. Can maybe get rid of it with a Cathar. For now, play Idol. At least Ornithopter we can put in play with Shadowfax. So we have to make a decision next turn. Could go Caravan plus Ornithopter. And that would give us the most amount of mana. Put on already making quite a bit of food. So, could also go for Celebrants, and then uh, next turn we'll still be able to play Shadow Facts, and then maybe take an extra attack step, and be able to clear a blocker and put an Oketra into play. That does sound pretty appealing. Alright, let's give it a shot. I mean, Austerith entering untapped. Also very thematic. And a Voice of Plenty. 3-4. Their other creatures are protected, so now Brutal Cathar has to go after Shalai. Opponent's got three food tokens, so Sam can also get stuff back from the graveyard. And our opponent's building up a very nice board. Still two mana available, and it's gonna be Merry. Okay. So Shadow Fangs will probably end up trading here. Nope, opponent's attacking. So I guess Mary can still trade for the Celebrants. But it's go time. Attack and exert. Step one, Brutal Cathar. Otherwise our opponent could double block Shadow Fangs. Opponent could still trade Mary for Cathar here, but then they don't have a creature able to trade for Shadowfax in the extra attack step. Does trigger the Greeters again, that's a bit of a nombo here. And Sam as well. So we're still not in a great spot, but they didn't actually trade for Celebrant, so that has another chance of exerting in two turns. Bone falls to four. Justice Strike also not the best answer to Shalai. Our opponent's gonna bring back Mary. Does go to hand and not to the battlefield, so they'll still need to recast it. But they do have access to a lot of mana here. And of course the food tokens can also keep them alive. Ooh, a feasting troll king. And yeah, thanks to Shalai, we won't be able to Justice Strike. Make even more food. Back up to six. This is a treasure, so they still have two mana at least. Enough for Mary. Mary. 
Shall I is attacking? That's very aggressive. But I guess it's still protecting the rest of the team. So we don't have an amazing attack, but at least Ornithopter triggers Oketra. Pass it back. And our opponent gets to untap with all their mana, all their food tokens. Two cards in hand. And a Rosie, also quite good with Sam, as you can imagine. And even if they grow Shalai, I'm still not going to be able to take it out with Justice Strike. Now I do get to exert Celebrant again. Uh, Laurent's going to blow up the caravan, probably. So I'm going to have to be pretty lucky here with my next couple draws to have a chance. The opponent's board is just going to be very difficult to deal with since they have so much recursion, life gain, and uh, various mana sinks. Shall I does attack? So we fall to 9. And a Requisitioner. Yeah, best I can do is probably Blitzing Requisitioner, Animate Idol and Smash. Unless we want to be patient here. Opponent's got plenty of blockers lined up. Only one of them is really very big, so we may still be able to make a dent, but of course 9 foot tokens means they can get back all their historic permanents to hand. Just the strike's not going to get any better. Yeah, I think it's just go time here. Attack with all and exert. Come on, Celebrant. Nothing to put in play, unfortunately. Maybe if we had one more... Expensive creature, that could have made the difference. If they trade for Requisitioner, I guess we get to draw and maybe put something else in play with Shadowfax. So our opponent lining up their favorable trades. They are trading away Rosie. They should try to trade for as many creatures in the first attack step before we get the extra one because things are just not going to get any better otherwise. Alright, so we'll let damage happen. Could make some more mana here. So Requisitioner gets to draw. And then I'm hoping for a big hit here. Can put Oketra back, but that's not going to be the next draw step. Found an Esper Sentinel. Well... I guess it's still worth it. Troll King has 6 damage, so if it blocks it will at least trade. But they can block Sentinel with Sam. Yeah, imagine finding one of our removal creatures that gets rid of Shalai, then all of a sudden I can just strike one of their blockers and then, yeah, maybe we get there, but was not meant to be. Opponent will trade away their creatures more or less. But as the dust settles, our opponent's still pretty far ahead thanks to all those food tokens and shall I. Still an interesting game. Troll King can only be returned in their turn, so they can get it back on end step at least. But they can still probably find a way to deal lethal with shall I picking up counters from Rosie. And then uh, Loran can clear or flyer. Unless they somehow get uh, Shalai to have the same power as Toughness. So there's Rosie. Sam triggers, Rosie triggers. And there's Loran to blow up Ornithopter. Can show them the Justice Strike. Just one extra point of toughness making the difference. GG's. Right. 
All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Sorin, Imperious Bloodlord. Our hand is missing some top-end cards, but I like the start of Savior plus Arcane Signet. So I'll give it a shot. Could still play a tap land and then next turn go Signet plus Savior, but we may draw another one drop we want to cast. Okay, so play Signets. Could also go for Mary. Does that matter? Because yeah, getting to attack with Mary, then next turn I can play Geode, but then we would still need to draw lands. So I think it's safer to still play the Signet on two. Make it more likely we can play Shadowfax at the earliest opportunity. Aetherborn's annoying, but a Braid's a nice answer. So Geode, trying to scry into something impactful. Mountain's not incredibly impactful. I guess it depends how you look at it. Clear the Aetherborn and hit for one. And then we get to run out Shadowfax with Savior to protect it. But let's see what Sorin can cheat into play here. Kalitas, that's a very good one. So now if we sacrifice Savior, our opponent gets to make a zombie token. So that's pretty annoying. Alright, gonna have to run out Shadowfax. Alright, so this goes face. And then Arresto Angel can uh, go after Sorin. I guess there's no real need to flicker Shadowfax, because otherwise we lose our attacker. Damage happens. And then next turn we can potentially draw a card with Mary. All right, that's enough for a concession. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Gandalf the Grey, so blue-red spells. And our hand is reasonable, especially if we can stick the landing on Captain Landry. Signet's also a nice turn two option. And our opponent does the same. Ooh, Ragavan. So now I could go Signet plus Ragavan. That's probably going to be a distraction. Could also dash Ragavan, but I think I prefer developing my mana even more. And then next turn Captain Lannery can still make a treasure potentially. And they're unlikely to be able to answer both. I was about to say, Prismari Command here would be quite effective dealing with Ragavan and my Signet, and there it is. Still get to connect with Lannery now at least. So now we could really use a Land of the Top to play Shadowfax. Opponents mostly tapped out, although they could still have the one mana counter for our commander. Alright, gotta give it a try. And then we can cheat Angel of Sanctions into play or Meter Golem. Although Angel exiling the Blazing Sky is a better answer, so it doesn't trigger. That resolves. And yeah, let's go with Angel of Sanctions. Exile the Blazing Sky, and connect for 10. Not bad. So our opponent's got 6 mana, spends 2 on a Cold Steel Heart. And then Invasion can make sure that we don't run into an ambush. Abraid and Thrill, so yeah, take the Abraid. Opponent can still cast it for 4 mana here, but that's not enough to take out Shadowfax or Angel of Sanctions. And then maybe send the Angel and the Invasion. Although if we put Enduring Angel into play, opponent could still Abraid Enduring Angel, 
And then I can still sack two treasures to Landry. We would be hitting for 11, so not quite enough for lethal. So, yeah, this seems fine. Could also choose to put in Meter Golem now instead. And then blow up one of the opponent's artifacts. And then they'll probably take out Captain Landry. Alright, our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand's probably not gonna cut it against Emoti. Need more big payoffs. Okay, this definitely counts. Now we're missing a bit of mana acceleration. But, uh, yeah. Celebrant for an extra attack step alongside Shadowfax could be exciting. Aurelia also lets us attack a second time. So, nice. Found a mana geode. Have to decide between geode or celebrant on three. Especially if we don't draw a land, Geode can scry towards one. And then Shadowfax put in, we'll see here, Aurelia or Meteor Golem. Yeah, I think that's fine. Now we can scry towards another heavy hitter, Lightning Bolts. I cannot quite play alongside Shadowfax next turn, would have been nice to maybe cast on this turn. So I'll bottom it. Also, if they deal with the Geode somehow, I may need an extra land. It's going to be a Solemn for Ramp. So they don't have any great blocks lined up for Shadowfax, which is what we like to see. So, yeah, Shadowfax put in Aurelia looks good. And then next turn we can take the extra attack step once Aurelia actually attacks. Opponent gets to untap with 6 mana, so could see something like a Kogla fight one of our creatures. Just gonna be an Emoti. Okay. And it hits an Arcane Signet, so still 2 mana available. And an Into the North. Alright, so our opponent's pretty exposed here. Just a 1 blocker back. And a Response Resurgence is also pretty fun. So... How about we take all the extra attack steps? Now the creature entering here will be tapped, but if we reorder these triggers, we can at least untap with Aurelia's ability. So Meter Golem's probably still more effective. <laughs> Alright, her opponent has seen enough. Yeah, Meter Golem destroys Emoti. We get to attack again, and then attack once again, and uh, be able to put pretty much everything in play here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Aragorn the Uniter. Our hand seems fine. Turn to Ornithopter, turn 3 File. And then I've got a few ways to clear a path for Shadowfax. Golem to destroy Aragorn, Aerosaur to keep attacking. So we'd love to pick up another expensive creature since we've got all the mana covered. Alright, let's see what our opponent's working with. Tap land on one. Could go for a caravan, which has the potential of turning into a 5-5 attacker at some point. A lightning bolt ornithopter, that's too bad. So now we'll need an untapped land to be able to play Shadowfax, but Aurelia is a pretty exciting one to put in play. Theoden's next. Okay, not too concerning just yet. And Fabled Passage right on time. So Shadowfax has a good attack. And yeah, don't mind putting an Aurelia in play for now. So next turn we get our extra attack step. And between Aerosaur and Golem, should be able to keep attacking. Can play Aerosaur first uh, main phase to flash Shadowfax, and then Golem can take something out too. Or I could wait for Aurelia to let us get an extra attack step, so Shadowfax puts the creatures in play tapped and attacking. Get some more damage in. Okay, Brutal Cathar is too bad. Exiles Aurelia. But now we can just uh, meter Golem to remove the Brutal Cathar and get Aurelia back. And Aloran doesn't have any great targets. If I play Aerosaur, I can also crew the Caravan. That's pretty nice. So 
So that seems worth it. Hit for 10. And get Aurelia back. And her opponent explodes. Awesome. Alright, so Shadow Fangs definitely showed us the meaning of haste since some of those games were over in the blink of an eye, so this seems like an excellent choice to complete your daily quests, especially if you're in a hurry, and it's also just a lot of fun to cheat those expensive creatures into play, get to play with a few cards that you typically don't put in your brawl decks since they have some pretty unique characteristics, so having a low power at a high mana cost is not something you typically look for, but that makes for an interesting deck building challenge, and I'm sure we'll see plenty more great additions in this deck over time as we get to see more expensive creatures with low power. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.